Hi guys, welcome to Know Your Gear. Today we're going to talk about the Gibson Les Paul and some of the issues that you come across when you get it. So, uh, and this goes for SGs and ES39, 35s. Pretty much if it's got a Gibson logo on it, this is the problem you're going to have. So when customers buy these guitars, Epiphones included, uh, one of the questions they get a lot is, hey, I bought this amazing high-end guitar and it has issues, and they very seem to be very distraught about that. So if you're looking to buy a Gibson, I'm going to point these issues out so that you get it fixed. Okay. So the first problem is they don't stay in tune. Okay. That happens uh, a, lo a lot with Gibson. They don't stay in tune, right? beautiful because I've already done the things that you need to do to Gibson. So here's what happens with Gibsons. The G and D string basically as soon as they cross the nut they bank immediately because the tuners are too far apart. It's a design flaw in Gibson. Okay but the headstock looks beautiful especially if you take off your tuner and the guitar of course sounds amazing. So uh, Gibson leaves it this way. So here's what you have to do. You have to um, basically get a new nut or if it's an F phone it's pretty much going to be happy to be the case. But on a Gibson sometimes if the nut is right um, we have to polish it to, correct, to, to make it smooth, make sure it's correct, uh, correctly cut for the strings, and then we lubricate it a little bit. If that's, and if that's not going to work, then we replace it with a new nut. Something that's made of Corian or bone, because uh, aesthetically it looks correct and uh, much better material. So, let's talk about why that problem persists. Well, as the string crosses the nut, it immediately banks to the right or to the left. And what happens is, it's just like anything. If I do this, if I take a string, a string is straight. It's a piece of metal, right? Strings don't... Right? When you bend your string, it doesn't actually bend this easy. It bends kind of like this right awkward way. So say, here's what happens when you cross, your string crosses the nut. It bends the same way. It's just kind of, it's not right. And what happens is as you're tuning, right, it binds in the nut and stays. You're in tune. You play a chord or you do a bend and then boom, you pull yourself flat. So you do one of these knobs and then you're out of tune. My guitar's not because I set it up. But, uh... The, uh, the other issue with that is, the, um, on SGs specifically, for some reason the strings go sharp, right? Um, you'll play it, tune it again, and some are sharp. So you know, that really seems to scare guys, and they come in the shop all the time, and I tell them, look, it's just something that happens, and we take care of it. Um, so those are just some issues that Gibsons have, right? It's not a bad or good thing. So you know, Gretsch's are kind of known for it too, and I mean, I can cite a bunch of guitar companies that have it. It's a problem. Paul Reed Smith fixes the problem by bringing the two tuning keys in closer together, running the two strings straight. It's just a design, right? Um, doesn't make it better. It just shows that he fixed that particular issue. Does it make sense? So, Fender doesn't have the issue because the strings are straight. So, you know, uh, anybody who tells you the Fenders don't stay in tune just doesn't have their guitar set right because Fenders pretty much are the most durable when it comes to uh, staying in tune because of the way they're designed, right? The tremolo is what gets people out of tune, but if you're not using your tremolo, your fender should always stay in tune. And even with your tremolo, it should kind of stay in tune, right? Does it make sense? So let's go with that. Um, the second issue with Gibsons is that people tell me all the time that, you know, they bought this Gibson for, you know, one million dollars and uh, it's got some issues and, you know, a little of this and a little of that and they can't believe that and how did they do that and why. And here's the truth, they've always been that way. Gibsons have always been that way. Um, I, I own three Gibsons. I, I picked them out, each one, myself. I bought them uh, at music stores and uh, found, uh, fell in love with each one. And every single one of the three, uh, I bought one new and two used, and all three of them have some kind of thing, issue, which is why I prefer to buy them used, because I feel like when I buy them new, same as everybody else, I'm like, really? You know, there's some overspray. The binding doesn't touch like the way it should. There's a, there's a blurb there. But here's the deal, I don't look at them like, I don't buy Gibsons for that reason. I buy Gibsons because they sound amazing, and I like Slash, and so I buy a Les Paul because of Slash. That's just how it works, right? You might be Jimmy Page guy, you just might think Gibsons sound like nice. Some of you may think they're comfortable. I don't really think they're comfortable or uncomfortable. I will tell you this, I think they're heavy, so that's another reason why I buy them all in person. Uh, all mine are light. This is like air. Uh, this one I, just, I found, and it's probably six and a half, seven pounds. I'm going to say seven. Seven pounds, super light. Sounds great. What's not the love? So, <coughs> sorry. That's uh, that's basically how I picked it out. So, um, I hope that helps with some Gibson uh, customers out there because it seems to be a hot topic for me on a day-to-day -day basis. With because uh, I get a lot of Gibsons for setups, and as they come in, those are the issues always explained to me. 
And I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I should explain to people that these are okay. So it's okay to have these issues, right? I know a lot of people look at it like, I can't believe I paid $2,000 for a guitar and it needs a setup and that's ridiculous. To me, I look at it as per diem. Uh, you know, you pay two, $3,000 for a guitar, to put 50 bucks into it to make it play amazing doesn't seem too crazy to me. Does it make sense? Um, it's just how it goes. You know, um, the, uh, it's, 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 it's hard, it's hard to say, you know, uh, it's hard to say who's right or wrong in that instance. So, again, um, the only thing I can say is Paul Red Smith doesn't need to be set up out of the box. So, that's kind of a nice attribute to Paul Red Smith. The only problem is Paul Red Smith's not a Gibson either. So, uh, I have both. I love them both for different reasons. So, I, I accept the fact for Gibson, you gotta get them serviced. So, all right, guys. Thanks for your time. Know your gear.